Hey, Samuel, have I got a story for you. I was in Kenya, in the city on the ocean, Mombasa. No money. I was completely broke. I had maybe three or four dollars on me. No place to stay, no food, didn't know where I was going or where I would end up. So I, heard, um, I was wandering through the temple streets and uh, where they have a lot of shops. And there was an American there. Um, and when I asked him if he knew of a place I could stay, he said, well, there's a Sikh temple down the street here. You should go try them. I heard they're free. He said, I don't know if they're any good or not, but you can check them out. Well, it was getting late in the day. It was starting to get dark. So I crossed my fingers and walked down the street. And there was this huge concrete building, the Sikh temple with one little door in it. So I knocked on the door and this little old guy came to the door. <laughs> he, he looked really suspicious. He was a, a Sikh, he had on his turban and, um, and he looked suspicious. And, like he really didn't want to see me, but he said, okay, what can I do for you? And I said, look, I need a place to stay. Can you help me? He said, okay, that's fine. We have a room that you can use and it's free. I said, wow, this is great. I can stay all night in, in this place here and, you know, it'll be safe and, and hopefully it's a nice room. So he turned away and walked down this dark little hallway and I, I followed him. <laughs> and there, was, there were three or four doors and one door on the left. Um, he opened the door and showed me in and said, okay, this is your room and you can stay here tonight for free. Well, I looked in the room and it was... <laughs> quite a shock. There was just a concrete room. It looked like a warehouse. And on the wall, on the, on the floor, against the left wall, was a, a pallet, just like the, they use when they're loading paper, wooden pallet, very low to the floor. So I got, <laughs> I got out and um, I, I didn't have anything to do, lose. I had to stay there. So I thought I'd try it out and it, I, I didn't have anything to do either. <laughs> so I just lay down and I started trying to get comfortable. Well, here's a big secret for you, Samuel. You're never going to get comfortable lying on a couple of pieces of plywood or ch chopped wood like a pallet. It ain't going to happen. And the only thing that I had to cover me, all I had was a little bag. And in the bag was a sarong. They call it a kikoi uh, that j your uncle John, uh, your great uncle John had given to me. And so um, I, I just tried to make myself comfortable on this wooden bed that was really not a bed, um, covered up by a sheet that really wasn't a sheet. And there was a huge window um, facing the, the door um, and it was open, and I soon discovered there was no glass in this big window. There were just bars, metal bars like I was in a prison uh, to keep it safe, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if it was to keep me in or the bad guys out or what. Um, so I just lay there, and I was saying, man, gosh, I've got to, there's got to be some way around here I can get a little bit of comfort and one, one spot would feel a little comfortable. And then in about two or three minutes, it would get hard. So then I'd move and there were nails in it. And, um, about an hour later after this, the mosquitoes arrived. I mean, huge groups of mosquitoes came in through the window. And since there was no glass, that I guess the word got out that <laughs> there was a juicy foreigner in town. So these mosquitoes started lining up, getting in, trying to get me. And, and the kikoi that I had, the piece of cotton uh, that I used as a sarong during the day, wasn't long enough to cover me up. I had to choose between covering my feet or my face and my head. And so I was moving back and forth <laughs> <laughs> for the next four hours, tried covering up my feet for a few minutes and then my head for a few more minutes. And, 
and the mosquitoes didn't care. <laughs> they, they knew <laughs> I might be covered here, but they knew that my feet were all uh, ready to, for a little suck. So they, they, and then I go down, and then they, oh, okay, let's go to the face now. So I guess they had the routine down pretty good. So it must have been six hours of this, Samuel, six hours of fighting off the mosquitoes unsuccessfully. And finally, at about 3.30 or 4 a.m., they just went away. There were no more mosquitoes. So I said, oh, finally, I can get a little bit of sleep. And this was the point at which the loudspeaker just outside my window started blaring out Sikh prayers. They were saying their early morning prayers and calling uh, the Sikhs to come to pray in the temple. And it was like, <laughs> it was nice and loud because the speaker was right there by the window. So I was this, <laughs> so for, for three more hours, I was lying there hoping that the prayers would stop, and they didn't. <laughs> Trying to keep myself covered up, which I couldn't. <laughs> so finally, <laughs> finally I said, okay, this is it. I got up, and I said, I deserve a little bit of a treat. So with the 2 or $3 that I had that I could spend, I went uh, down the street, and I found a little British-style coffee shop. Um, I, I said goodbye to nobody because the door was open, but there was nobody there. I guess they were all saying their prayers. So I said goodbye to nobody, walked down the street and found a coffee shop. And uh, I treated myself to a cup of British style tea, which is, has milk in it and a couple of little toast, uh, pieces of toast. They, they, uh, stood up the pieces of toast in a little wire uh, um, uh, stand for the toast and so this was my breakfast and I said I've got to do better than this uh, there's got to be something else and um, I remember that the man the night before had said that the, the other choice for me was down on the coast of Mombasa um, on the beach where they had where there was a new youth hostel opening up and so I, I, after having my tea, which was probably the most delicious cup of tea I ever had in my life, um, I, I walked down the street uh, and, and found the bus station and got on the public bus to go to the coast. And I'll tell you in my next story, um, I'll tell you the story of, of my uh, week or so at this uh, youth hostel on the beach uh, outside Mombasa. So I hope you like this story. <laughs> Thought I'd start off with a bang. I hope you like it. And we got dozens more where this came from. So keep listening and I'll see you soon. And uh, kiss your mom and dad for me. Bye.